There's a way to get various morph cards using accumulated loot. In this episode, we'll be taking a closer look at the Kodax Merchant Matari. You can go to Silver Knight's Village and meet Kodax Merchant Matari, where you can sell your monster loot and earn Hunter's Coin. You can also complete parts of the Monster Kodax by purchasing items from her. Tap the Item Usage button on each item for sale to find out which monster's codex the material is used for. Then, tap on the monsters to go directly to the monster's codex menu. By checking the monster's information on the right, you will know the exact number of materials needed. Eight materials are required to complete a single monster's codex, so a total of 32 is required to complete the whole codex. You can get a rare morph card by registering the purchased materials. Not only that, but you can also enhance friendship by buying, selling, and giving gifts to Matari. By enhancing friendship, you will be able to purchase higher grade loot and receive growth potions as a daily push reward. The loot that Matari sells changes on a weekly basis. So if you continue to purchase the loot, you'll be able to complete the Monster Codex without having to catch the difficult monsters yourself. To all the players troubled by the accumulated loot, we recommend you check out the Codex Merchant Matari. Here's this week's battle news. First, we have news on the Inasad 1 server where the battle between South Korea and Japan is heating up. In this server, most of the bosses were dominated by the JL group, centered around the South Korean blood pledge Ban Gong and the Taiwanese alliance Swag W. However, the tables had turned when the Japanese alliance Kizuna joined forces with the class alliance. The Kizuna alliance is actively participating in battles and defeating the major bosses. One user from the Kizuna Alliance celebrated their success of defeating the boss, saying, Since we successfully defeated Kurtz, now Japan has exclusivity over the bosses in the Einhasad 1 server. The Japanese group continued its momentum and defeated the Death Knight for the first time in the Einhasad 1 server. They also posted a photo of them blocking the enemy forces from leaving the village with a caption, It's the best feeling to have defeated the boss and subdued the enemy. The Kizuna Alliance is showing great teamwork. We'll have to wait and see if the Kizuna Alliance can become the strongest alliance in the Inasad 1 server. Next is the Ava World. As Taiwan's commander-in-chief of the Ava 9 server, Gwen Yu Wei, has become stronger, the Taiwanese groups have come out victorious. Lee mun was found expressing his anger when he was killed by the Taiwanese group. <laughs> Lee mun acknowledged his defeat and said that there needed to be a systematic command and control overseeing the entire alliance. Meanwhile, Imbam and Lee mun ended their ongoing dispute over the relationship between their alliances during a live stream. They reconciled their differences, claiming that the Korean groups should cooperate because they have a common enemy, the Taiwanese groups in the Ava world. It remains to be seen whether the powerful Taiwanese groups can continue to dominate the Ava world, or whether Imbam and Lee mun group can break their momentum. Apart from news from each server, we also have a special update. For the first time out of all the servers, a plus 10 epic sword has appeared. The man behind this feat was none other than Bulldog of the Joe 6 server. Recently, Bulldog has seen an increase in hostile relationships due to an internal division in the Blood Pledge. Nevertheless, he achieved the first plus 10 epic sword, solidifying his unparalleled presence on the server. A bold move as expected from Bulldog. In this episode, we covered servers with strong Taiwanese and Japanese forces, and we will continue to deliver news from various servers and regions.